hello uh, and welcome to this talk uh, about um, uh, free and open source virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, my name is Jacob Bonnekrantz. Uh, I currently work for Collabra and I do basically open source XR. Um, uh, and what I'm going to talk about now is basically explain a little bit what uh, AR and VR are, uh, a little bit about OpenXR, uh, about Monado, the project that we started, uh, the status of it, and show a little bit of demos, and then wrap the whole thing up. Uh, yeah. So, what is AR and VR? Uh, as, as you can see, uh, uh, augment, it's like adding things, making things better. Um, so, uh, one of the things that probably most of you have run into or seen is uh, Pokemon Go, where you can sort of place Pikachu or any other Pokemon in the world, uh, and you know that's AR. You add something to the to the thing, and you give it you know a new experience or things like that. Um, but it can also be used for other things, uh, not just games, but also working things. Uh, so this is a Dacre headset, uh, and the going to explain a little bit about the setup. So the guy you see uh, in this sort of video call is sitting somewhere else, and the operator that's wearing the headset um, is streaming what he sees to that guy in the, in the headset. Um, so the operator can see, and it can also then draw or you know, highlight things. So if you see that little, let's see, that ring there, that is actually you know, not something I scribbled on. It's what the operator scribbled on and like told him to say, pull this hard disk, or you know, screw, tighten that screw. So exactly like how I, you know, highlighted this with the, the pointer, he can highlight things in the real world. Uh, so that's a, actually a very powerful um, thing that you can do with AR, and you know, it's not just games. Um, uh, so, uh, what is virtual reality? Uh, I really like this quote. Uh, I thought at first but it was actually made by Adam Savage, but it's actually from a video uh, or a movie. Uh, I know you might have heard it. Uh, I react to reality and substitute my own, uh, which is kind of what virtual reality is. You just replace everything, um, but often what you think is, you know, a he VR headset and you just see things. But it can be a lot, lot more than that. But I'm gonna like limit myself to that definition. And of course, as you might know, you know, games where you uh, you know, play and you have different experience. Um, so, uh, but by that definition, where you are have replaced the whole reality, um, there's also like this is also by that you know, academic, academic, you know, uh, technical definition. I would say this is also virtual reality because even though it's a limited experience, it still completely replaced all reality, sort of saying. So, uh, it's. Kind of all like how you can see it. everything is replaced. Um, so what is what do you know? What do you get when you add AR and VR together? Or you know how can you talk about it? And that's sort of where XR comes in. It's everything that's in there, and it's not you know extended reality. It's you know X is replaced for either augmented or VR. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about OpenXR, um, like how do we do XR? Uh, kind of have this very simplified stack, you have your program, you have some sort of platform that runs, that program runs on, um, and you know you have hardware underneath, so the platform sort of extracts it. Uh, and to have you know, a program to talk to the platform, you need an API. Uh, and you know, in the past, and sort of a, how history has repeated itself, you know, there's various different APIs, uh, you know, kind of like the picture to the left here, uh, where everybody has their own thing, and everybody, if they want to support their thing, you know, they have to write multiple APIs. You know, it's not a good situation. But where OpenXR comes in is that their system is royalty free, uh, collaborative uh, API that everybody can implement. And, you know, you only have to run, write code runs, yeah. uh, and then you can support a wide variety of platforms and hardware. Um, uh, so what's so cool about OpenXR? Um, it's kind of just like OpenGL or Vulkan. You know, it's made by Kronos. It's uh, open in that sense. Um, and as I said, everybody can implement it. It's actually out now. Uh, 
it's action based, and I'll go a little bit into that. And there is no, no open source implementation for for it, um, which is us. Um, so one thing that uh, is kind of hard when you have you targeting different platforms or you uh, you know every controller looks a bit different. I can remember like GameCube controller or Xbox controller or uh, those look a bit different. So instead of the programmer going, I have an Xbox controller and I you know uh, just just get the input like X button or pressed, they instead um, give context to the program. So you say I have an action and uh, that is teleport. Um, and then they say uh, you might want to bind that to trigger button on this type of controller and you might want to bind it to A button on this type of controller. Um, so that, but the runtime is ultimately decides what actually goes into that. And the runtime I have then has a lot more context to understand what the application is doing. And also they can show that to the user uh, either before or during runtime where you can more easily remap. So you can see like shoot arrow or shoot cannon button or action. And you can remap that to a button. Say you have, you know, not, you have a twitchy finger or something and you want to just move it to another button. Or your controller does, or the controller you have doesn't actually match what the developers are running on it. So the default mapping might not be the best for you. Um, so I think the, that's like the best, second best thing of OpenXR. Uh, either the first is being it's open, uh, and the second is just that it's action-based and it abstracts uh, inputs in a completely new way. Uh, that is, I think is, you know, a big step up from just getting the buttons and then the control, the game have to do all the mapping themselves. So a little bit, I'll talk a little bit about Monado. Uh, again, how do we XR? Uh, you know, you have your program, your platform, and your hardware. Uh, Monado is the platform. Uh, and sort of uh, to go expand up on this a little bit. Uh, this is kind of a, a highest level diagram of uh, what Monado is. So all of the purple bits are Monado. Uh, we have our own compositor, so not to be confused by a Wayland compositor or or a you know X compositor. Uh, it's a compositor that takes what the game has rendered and turns them into something that looks good on the screen. Because you often have a whole bunch of lenses, you can have even kind of mirrors uh, for AI devices, and it's just you know, dealing with uh, taking care of all of the nitty gritty bits of basically advanced optics and physics of how to turn photons into something that looks good in the eye. Um, and you have a couple of drivers, and you sort of have this platform corner on the side. And on top of it, you have the open access tech tractor, which if you're familiar to Mesa and Gallium, how that is built up is basically built around the same principle. But now we also have the compositor and the platform sort of in that package. Uh, so it's not just drivers. So it's probably very familiar to uh, Mesa developers and the graphics people, uh, but it's you know it's a slightly more complex thing, uh, and you know you have part of uh, Monado. There's a whole bunch of accelerator libraries, and those are you know we try to extract things from drivers. So drivers mostly are about bit twiddlings, uh, the, the things that come from the hardware, and then just taking components and building up a you know, functional system. Uh, the compositor is quite large. There's a you know, wrapper around it and all those things. Um, so another one, <laughs> slightly more complex, but still scaled down. Uh, so you have to get the feel of how it all fits together. Uh, you might notice the, the couple of things that says XRT underscore and something there. Those are sort of the interfaces. I'm gonna talk a bit about more on later. Uh, and something that we have in the future is we're gonna put an IPC layer so we can just have one uh, you know, compositor or daemon or you know, run all of the drivers uh, in one process and then clients can connect to them um, from outside. So then I can keep running and you can switch, you know, switch games or switch uh, things that you run on top of it so you can 
runs, for instance, if you heard of the XR desktop project, you can run that at the same time you're running games and things like that. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the whole all XRT underscore things that you were seeing in the Grimes. Uh, so basically those are interfaces that kind of you know, similar to the Gallium interfaces. Uh, it's pure C, so uh, all nice and that. Uh, it's not stable, so it's all internal interfaces, just like the internal interfaces of the kernel and the internal interfaces of the Gallium drivers. Um, uh, so the basic thing we start with is the XRT device. Uh, so it's for both control uh, HMDs and controllers. Uh, it um, has sort of an aspect pattern, if you ever heard that, where instead of having a inheritance structures, we have side, side structs that you kind of allocate and point to. Uh, so a device, and I've designed this interface, um, you, I figured that some devices might actually have cameras and some might not, and some might have an, you know, how do you deal with, I have a control with a camera, uh, or I have a control that has not has a camera, and I can, you know, the inherited structure does become, you know, that pattern isn't good, so instead we have this aspect that you add to it. Uh, and yeah, um, there's functions on, you know, getting input, setting output, like making it vibrate, uh, and then there's a whole bunch of information there on like how the compositor should uh, drive the pixels to the screen that's on the device. And then there's a compositor. Um, this on the other hand has base class and then specialization on top of it. Uh, there's some glue code for uh, being able to support both GL and Vulkan interfaces. Uh, then there's this read compositor and they talk between each other with FDs, uh, DMA buffs. Uh, yeah, and then this all Basically, uh, it's just a mirroring of the OpenXR interface uh, functions uh, that you can look up in the right history and see the um, sort of how the map up. Um, uh, then we have the prober, which is sort of a, here's everything that goes that's not anything else, but we need to glue together, or we need to, you know, how do we find devices? Um, how you know? take care of platform code and uh, so, sort of a glue, winces, and everything is just, and policy holder, uh, they just st stick it all together. Uh, so where are we? Uh, we are mostly complete with OpenXR. Uh, we have currently only an in-process compositor we're hoping to do uh, that soon, so we can get run multiple programs at the same time. We have sort of built up a video processing framework, and I will kind of show it that later on. Uh, we can track uh, these PS Move controllers. Um, and we're working on improving that as well. Uh, we have a really nifty debug, debug UI as well, and I'll show that off. Uh, we support multiple hardwares and uh, natively, uh, and we also have the North Star and Dream uh, Daydream controller we have on uh, our branches, uh, but we also have the OS VR SDK drivers of Vi Pro and Index. Uh, we have an experimental branch for positional tracking of those uh, through the Live Survive project. Uh, we took the PlayStation VR and Move, the Razor Hydras, and we also have a wrapper around OpenHD so we can um, use all of those drivers that are there uh, so that to make sure that nothing gets left behind. Uh, in terms of code, uh, I thought it was a little bit fun, so 35 K of lines of code. Uh, you can see one driver is between 500 lines or 1,500. So we have extracted, I think, a lot of what goes into the driver out of it. And you can see sort of a, uh, all of the things, all of the heavy stuff is outside of the driver. So it's writing a driver is not really hard once you understand the bits. So it's all the reverse engineering. Uh, and then your, the other hard parts are tracking and moth that goes around it. So that, but those are in sort of a helper library, so uh, this is what Monado actually gives you. Uh, we are hoping, or well, planning on uh, sort of the short-term roadmap uh, is finishing up the OpenXL support with fully conformant, improve the tracking, uh, add PSVR tracking, 
uh, and the auto process composite compositor. Um, but that's kind of just what we want to do. But if anybody wants to do anything else, you know, they can do it on their own. So, uh, and also we haven't uh, how to call it called mm -hmm. dibs on any of things. Uh, so if you you know think oh I really wanted to do that, you just talk to us uh, and we can help you out. So yeah, yeah, it's just kind of well, our own plans. Uh, even further out, uh, like how do we do all the things that sort of Steam, if you have ever tried Steam VR, they have their own system UI, set of UI, the you know, s sort of safe space that you come back to if the game crashes, uh, incorporating lighthouse tracking and also looking into AR and SLAM uh, tracking. Oh, <laughs> uh, so, a couple of demos. Pray to the demo gods, uh, first and foremost. So I will start off by showing just basic tracking. Uh, and the cool part, I, I won't turn this to you guys so I don't accidentally film you. Um, so this is just basic two webcams, a stereo webcam. Uh, I'll use the best tracking. Uh, it's sort of available for everybody. I will... Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Speak of the demo gods. Uh, so this is not actually showing uh, from inside. It's showing sort of running in what we call headless, uh, but it's more easier to understand. So you can see the both. Two controllers here. I'm overrun them. Uh, we're, you know, work in progress and all that. You can see it's a little bit jittery, uh, but you can see it's actually some of them are quite jittery. Uh, and I will actually then show off uh, the deb debug UI for this. Turn off. Da -da -da. So. This is our cool and nifty debug UI, and I can sort of explain what's going on. So this is what the camera is seeing. Uh, it's very short exposure. Uh, I can turn it off to show what it's actually showing. So hey. Uh, so you can see the exposure is very short, uh, but then the balls uh, overexpose exposure, so I can can't tell them apart now. But if I lower it again, you can see there's one is red and one is purple, and then I can also see uh, the filter. So you can see this is the uh, red filter, and you can see there's a bit of a noise from that one, a little bit. Uh, and what I know why that is, and so that's because the uh, the white balance is off, and now there's no uh, <laughs> no noise on that, so it's just picking up this thing, and that's it's fed into the trackers, and they show where the ball is and it's drawing it and it's finding the ball. Uh, it's kind of a bit hard, but yeah. So yeah. Uh, so that's sort of where we are on that. That's uh, sort of also what I have been doing. Uh, uh, Christoph had a nice talk where he showed off the lips of ice tracking in his talk with um, about uh, doing game dev game dev development. Uh, and yeah, uh, that is it for demos. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a little bit of rants. Uh, if I hot plug 
non-desktop displays. Uh, Gnome Shell really likes to reorder all my windows, so that's super annoying. So if there are any Gnome developers, please look into that. Uh, because, yeah, I usually plug in and plug out uh, HMDs. Uh, and Intel gets a special call out because we're using a extension uh, that's not available on Intel uh, to interrupt between OpenGL and our compositor. Uh, yeah, that sucks. Uh, yeah, there's lots of lots of lots of work. Uh, I actually had the same status page already in October, uh, and sort of, a, are we actually doing anything? And yes, tracking is just really, really, really hard to do. Uh, and we sort of just now actually have some improvements on the move, uh, move tracking. We couldn't get it in uh, right now, and you know we have made some progress on the PS3 tracking. It just takes a lot of time. Uh, and like, how do we do settings and things like that? Do we, you know, is GNOME interested in to make their own UI? Do we have to make our own UI for it? Um, yeah. And we're also like really interested in building up a FOSS XR uh, community, not just for, you know, private developers, but also higher up in the stack. But you know, our focus is there, but we are, have, uh, Last year we had the first FOSSXR conference, and we're planning to have one this year as well. So uh, the link there is uh, to the FOSSXR Twitter account. We'll tell you <laughs> when we actually know when it is. Probably be, probably be you know uh, in Amsterdam around BlenderConf. Uh, so a whole bunch of links. Uh, you can once I actually manage to get it up, uh, we do actually have both internships for XR stuff. So if you're interested in this and you're finishing up your studies and looking for internships, definitely go into the link, and there's also regular job postings. Uh, but if you're also, I don't think we have anything <coughs> specific for XR there, but I do think you should send your in your CV anyways, or you talk to me if you're interested in it. Um, yeah, and there's also all the other pages for Monado and OpenXR and so on going on. And if you see me, you know, come off their talk or ask questions because I apparently blew through all the slides, and I didn't think it would uh, go that fast. Uh, so yeah, talk to me about just about anything. Uh, we are uh, my own little pro old programming Amigas, uh, <laughs> voxels, yeah, uh, just everything, and especially about joining Collabra. Uh, so uh, thank you very much, and any questions, because we have lots of time. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. You mean it, uh, so Oculus actually do? Yes, they have shipped. Okay, sorry. Uh, when do we see more bundle support for OpenXR? Uh, Microsoft have, was one of the first ones that shipped it off uh, support uh, there, so they are there. Uh, Oculus has also shipped off support on their desktop. I think, yes, uh, and, and there's also us. Uh, but uh, I, yeah, more of them are coming. Uh, Steam, uh, Valve has their Valve time, so I can't really comment on them when they want to do it, uh, but hopefully at some point. Uh, so I mean, and they are in the working group, uh, so definitely are interested in it. Um, so yeah, but it's still slightly early, uh, but there's definitely a shift, and uh, I think all of the main players are on board, so. Uh, yeah, soon TM or Valve time soon, <laughs> but they're already all out there and uh, people can use it. Yes. Um, could you please elaborate on the, the, the fragmentation layout, the slides? Okay, sure. Uh, click, 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 click. Okay. So in the past. Uh, Yes, oh, sorry. So can you comment on the defragmentations? Uh, sure. Um, so in the past, everybody had their own API. Uh, Oculus had their own API. Uh, SteamVR had OpenVR. Oc uh, you know, Samsung and Daydream, and, uh, you know, they, and we, we even open source community had their own API with OpenHMD. Uh, and you know, most applications wrote it either to just OpenVR and maybe Oculus, uh, or you know, so there was some Windows stuff there. Uh, 
uh, and you know, we have all the app, uh, Android applications. So it's, yeah, you couldn't really, especially for us in open source, you know, nobody wrote to uh, OpenHD, you know, you know, unless it was a crazy open source guy. So it wasn't really an ideal picture. Um, so what OpenXR gives us is that uh, there's one API and you can make portable application. Um, the API, I would say, is slightly more complex than, say, OpenVR, uh, but uh, OpenXR uh, also handles a lot more types of devices and sort of is future-proof. Uh, you know, uh, its, it's current sort of target is just VR, but it's definitely designed with AR and all of the knowledge that, say, Windows doing on HoloLens doing AR stuff actually know. So it, it, it's you know, ready for it. And uh, as time goes on, we will re release extension and then, then update the core, just like uh, OpenGL does, where you know we had one, <laughs> you know, the first one, um, which didn't even have textures, and then you have version two, which had shaders, and then more shaders uh, you know, built up. So just like that, uh, OpenXL will be built up. Uh, it's going on as we go along. Uh, yes? Do you have any knowledge or something that you can talk about about the device plugin? Uh, it's not there yet. Uh, there's probably, uh, we have a face-to-face -face, uh, <laughs> yeah, next week, and there will probably be discussion about it. But it's designed by committee. Uh, for all, it's for, uh, you know, takes a long time, and everybody has to agree. Uh, but it also, you know, works through uh, things uh, slowly. So, yeah, th there's definitely a will for it, and it will probably at some point show up, uh, hopefully. Uh, but in the meantime, you can write, you know, one auto drivers, and you will support OpenXR that way. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Next question. Yes. <laughs> Say you have a device that is not powered by HDMI or something, but uh, expects the stream. Press stream to be sent to it. Yes, um, uh, about devices that not doesn't plug into a display port or HMI or anything like that. Um, sure, uh, you know, not always plug, uh, modular. So we had definitely thought about you know replacing the compositor and instead sending it to say an encoder and you're sending it over the uh, Wi-Fi or 5G or say a USB link, uh, which is basically what Oculus Link is. Uh, so there's definitely you know. If we had infinite amount of time and infinite amount of code monkeys, we would do it because it's fun uh, and you know it's a cool feature to have. But you know, priorities and just getting over the initial hump of what you want to do. So it's it's just it's just it's open, uh, you know, and everybody can hack on it. So if you think that's fun, uh, internet user, please you know come and talk and hack on it, and then you can have we everybody can have it. And that's a, sort of the power of open source. Um, yeah. Next question. <sighs> All right. Uh, oh, actually, one. Sure, yes. that's okay. So, regarding how willing are, say, organizations to support open and how proprietary existing interfaces and how willing companies to make it open? How do I? Hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, um, OpenXR was started by, I think, Valve, Epic, Unity, Oculus. So they were on there from the beginning. Uh, Microsoft joined uh, after a while, and that was sort of like, yeah, we all shared, because <laughs> uh, we didn't really think that. But they, uh, Microsoft has been the one that has actually been pushing it most, I would say. So they were there at the start. Uh, uh, and But yeah, I think, hmm, if you did, so everybody's fine with opening, you know, the front layer, the thing that application writes to, because that's actually solving a problem for them, uh, where, you know, you know, Unreal game developers, where you know, I don't want to target all of these APIs. I just want one, and then you know, okay, we just have to solve the problem. Everything that goes on behind is prob, you know, that's their IP and all of it locked down and stuff like that. Um, but yeah. Uh, and, there's probably you know, uh, you know, content protection as well behind the scenes as well. So, uh, but the front for part they're all uh, you know they're very open to, and you know, they are releasing 
drive, you know, run times, OpenXL run times that people can use. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's where Monado comes in. So we, you know, completely open source stack that you don't have to do anything like that. And you know, uh, we do have to then reverse engineer the say hardware and figure out what actually, uh, uh, you know, what the bits do that we are getting from the device. And we have to do all of the complex math to do the tracking and um, you know, uh, slam tracking. There's tons of tons of university research and you know, spending a lot of time. So sort of it's always a question of resources that we have that we can do. I mean, we want to do everything. Uh, and our primary goal is to make sure that when the AR revolution comes, open source has a solution uh, and also provide you a platform to do also VR as well. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, and everything, like political questions, I think that that's fine. Just keep asking anything, even remotely related to XR, uh, that's okay. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you very much. And, uh